Hello guys, welcome to my first video on this channel. I'm actually going to be starting a new series where I complete reverse engineering challenges on many different websites. Uh, these challenges will start off being pretty simple and over time they will get more complex. So if you're interested in reverse engineering as much as I am, I do recommend you follow along with me and try to take notes along the way. I uh, will start off with uh, challenges off of this website here called crackinglessons.com. I've actually left the uh, link in the description or the comments, depends on where YouTube allows me to put it since this is the first video on my brand new channel here. And yeah, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Once you get to this website here, uh, just hit on download and just extract it and there will be a password for the zip file which is uh, crackinglessons.com so put that in there. and we'll be able to run the program right after that. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do just that. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what we're working with. Um, from the picture, it looks pretty simple. Just enter a serial key, check, and about. So um, I actually will run the program on a VM here. Okay, so we're here in the VM that will be running the challenge. So I've already downloaded it and got it ready right here. So I just moved it into a folder on my desktop and it's called crack me one so let's go ahead and run this program and see what we're working with so if i double click on it there might be an error that shows up beforehand that will say something like um, windows thinks there's a virus or something like that just continue um you just press on like more information and then run anyways and this is what will happen when you run the program it says here please enter a serial key check and about so obviously we don't know what serial key you know will work in here if i press if i type a random number it's this wrong serial key try again let's type in letters boom wrong serial key let's type in password or something like that wrong serial key again so it won't let us get into the program so the first thing i like to do is try to determine what strings are available um in this program so i'm actually gonna swap over here to my uh linux machine here and we're gonna be running strings so i've actually downloaded the program here as well um pretty sure it's in my downloads yeah so i've already downloaded and extracted the program in here as well so here's the crack me one exe i'm gonna run a simple strings command right here I've already done that before so so I'm going to type in strings, crack me one .exe, and then I'm going to send it to a text document. So just CM1, I'll just call it that. You call it whatever. And then I'm going to go ahead and type mousepad. I'm going to use mousepad and then we're going to launch it up in CM1.txt. So then I can actually open it. And in here, I can actually see all the strings available for this program. So let's scroll down and see what we can, what we have to work with. So I'm looking for anything related to the key or password or anything like that. So let's go ahead and look. We're getting a bunch of garbage, but in between here, we should be able to find something. Okay, here we go. Congrats and well done. Sorry, wrong key. Try again. Okay, so that's pretty interesting and that's really good to know because now we know that there's two paths here. We know there's a congrats section and then there's a well done. Okay, well, I guess these two are connected. We have a sorry section, wrong key, and congrats, well done section. So there should be two paths that this program can end up in. And obviously, we've made it to this path. We haven't made it to here yet. Um, another thing you can do in here is press Control F or Command F on Mac. And then you can type in. So I could have typed like key or password. So if I typed key, it would have brought me here instead of having to search through Running strings is a very basic command and not every program will allow you to run strings and get information such as that out of it. Now I'm finished with this machine, I'm just going to swap back to my Windows 10 VM here and now we're going to get ready to get into it. So I'm going to be using IDA, you can use Ghidra um, to do this as well but I'm using IDA free and obviously you can download it for free and use it along with me. I'm going to go ahead and press here, I agree, press OK whatever and then we're gonna go ahead and new and i'm gonna go ahead and get the program open which is right here i press on okay and press on no all right we're getting a bunch of errors sample anyways once it's done it'll disassemble and we're gonna be left with 
this if i press space it'll take me back to the assembly view press space again will take you back to the graph view so we're going to be sticking with the graph view since it'll be a little easier i mean it depends on what you think it's easier the graph view or the assembly view um or i don't know this is just the normal they're both assembly but just one is a lot easier to read um but first we're gonna actually do is search for strings so let's go ahead and do that so remember we did the the linux command before and we were able to find strings so we can actually do that in item so that's why i said it wasn't really that important so let's go ahead and look for some strings you just press on view uh open sub views and we're gonna look in here should be strings let's see where is it oh, here we go shift f12 i guess you could also do that press on strings so again this is the same strings that we noticed before um, but this time we, we're going to be looking specifically for uh, well done, sorry, and wrong key. Let's go down to the uh, congrats section. I'm going to double click into it. This will take me right here. As you can see, congrats, well done at this memory address. And then I can cross reference it into this function. So we are looking here at two different um, outputs. So we have the well done section and we have the sorry section. So obviously, when I was typing in a bunch of random stuff, into the program because I didn't know what the serial key was. I was getting the sorry wrong serial key option, but this is where we want to get to the well done option. So let's read what happens. If we go up here, we see um, we're pushing zero on the stack. Uh, we're testing EAX, EAX with itself. So we're testing for something. And then we're going to go ahead and jump, not zero. We're going to be jumping to this memory address right here 401154. Um, so we're testing to see if EAX is zero or not. So if EAX is not zero, we're going to be jump over here. So what do we know about that? So that means that the program wants EAX to be zero before we could get to over here, get to the well done section. So let's figure out where is EAX becoming zero. So let's go up some more. So we have two more options here. Okay, so over here, I see we are XORing EAX. When you XOR something with itself, you'll basically set it to zero. So we're gonna go ahead, XOR EAX with itself, which is zero. And we're gonna go ahead and store zero into EAX. All right, so now that we know the path that we wanna go ahead and head down to, to get to here, I'm gonna follow this arrow up all the way up to here. So this seems to be where the main, uh, execution occurs for for us to get down here so let's go ahead and head up here and i'm actually gonna zoom out real quick i do want to look at some other things real quick just going ahead and setting up the stack okay. yeah so all the good information that we need actually starts Right up here okay so we have jump not zero we're not going to worry about those two but we know that jump not zero will lead will lead us to 401130 which skips us all the way down to here and that actually does not go down the path we want so let's go ahead and set a breakpoint right here we can do that by selecting the line we're going to go ahead and press on debugger and well, um, where is it? Debugger up a breakpoint. I'm gonna go ahead and press on add breakpoint. Now if we set a breakpoint here. I'm gonna make sure we're on local Windows debugger. And we're gonna go ahead and run the program. Press on yes. This will go ahead and run. So here's our program. And it wants us to enter serial key, so I'm just gonna go ahead and enter a bunch of garbage again. I'm gonna press on check. And there you go. Our program stops right here at jump and not zero okay we set a breakpoint to stop right here and now we can see this blinking line here that's telling us that the next step is to go into here but we don't actually want that we want it to go this way to jump to here because we want it to be zeros so in order to do that we just double click on this um or we just click on this um instruction here j and z Hopefully it's not too small. I'm actually going to try to zoom in here. And I'm going to go ahead and press on edit. 
and where is it? I'm gonna press on patch program and I'm gonna go in and press on change. Or I'm sorry, I'm press on assemble. All right, so this will allow me to edit the instruction right here. Um, with the compare right here, um, what's at memory regex ECX with DL will be not, won't be zero. So we wanna go ahead and switch this to JZ. What this does is that now it's gonna see jump zero and this isn't zero. So it just continues on with the next instruction to so press okay. And I'm just gonna close out of this. Okay, so next step, we need to go ahead and step um, step over this breakpoint. So I'm gonna go up here, I think, or I think it's uh, F8 would be the option. Yeah, go into your debugger and press on step over or press on F8. I'm just gonna be pressing manually doing it. When I press right there, as you can see, we are now going into this point of the code and we're gonna go ahead and press on step over again we're now on this line of code which says here jz which takes us into all of this section of code which means jump zero so we're testing these two registers dl and it turns out that they're zero so now we want to change this to jump not zero and then that will just skip over this line and instead it will go this way so i'm going to double click because obviously remember we want to get down into here to where we set ex to zero because obviously if you remember we want eax to be zero so we can get down into the well done section so let's go back up so we see jump zero heading into this way we don't want that we want it to jump down into here so go ahead and double click on here or actually just click it and go ahead and do patch program and assemble and we switch it to J and Z which is jump not zero boom okay just close out of that and again jump or I'm sorry debugger step over as you can see we're now stepped over to here we're now into this point where we're setting uh, we're going to be setting um, EAX to zero so if we look up here this is our general registers. We should be able to see EX becoming zero once I step over. So let's go ahead and press on jump. And, or sorry, debugger, step over. EAX is zero. Completely zeroed out. And what's happening? We're going to this section now, which is LOC 41135 right here. Pushing zero. Right, let's go ahead and jump. Or, I'm sorry, I keep saying jump. I mean to I mean go into debugger and step over. Debugger, step over. Now we're testing the two. This is testing to make sure EAX is zero before we can do this um, piece of code here. So it says jump not zero. Jump not zero will again lead off to here, but it is zero, so it'll actually go into here. So let's go ahead and press step over. Yep, jump not zero. That should check out and over right now into here so let's go ahead and run through this program now i'm just gonna keep going through until we get to that particular point and i also do want to mention one thing i don't have the documentation opened up but i'm pretty sure the message box api needs um eax the eax register to be zero for it to open up i don't have the documentation open up probably should go open it but i'm just too lazy to do that but just take my word for it right now but the ex register needs um or i'm sorry the meshes box register for i think it's like the mdn docs or something like that needs ex to be zero to for the Stephen open that's why we're making sure that um ex was zero the whole time um but yeah just just something to note but i'm just gonna continue the program now whatever just don't worry so there you guys go the message box opens up saying well done and there you go pretty much that's pretty much the end of the program to be honest but i'm pressing on okay here i close this out i'm gonna step over all of these code here just to make sure we get it all done boom 
and boom we're at the end of the program there's nothing else to do okay so let me go ahead and try to patch this program so we're going to press patch program so we want to save all, all the stuff to a new patch program because right now all we did was patch the code itself we haven't patched the actual program to run it so let's go ahead and press here create a backup um, again, we create a backup so that way we can come back to, if we need to make changes or go back to the revert it to the original version. We have that All right. Whatever. Um, apparently, I'm getting an issue here. Whatever, I'm press that, and we're gonna go ahead and do file or edit patch program, supply patches, create the backup. Okay. Yep. Okay. So there you go. And I finally got it. So now we're gonna go ahead and double click. Enter a serial key, I'm gonna enter whatever I want. I'm gonna check it and I'll just say well done. I get to enter any garbage. Remember I was typing in password before. Check it, boom, password's working, everything seems to be working. And obviously here's the backup. So if I wanted to revert it, I could. Um yeah guys, so that's pretty much all I wanted to do for this first video. This is a very simple, straightforward crack me. The next ones that we do will be getting more and more complex over time hopefully i did a good job explaining things um, one of the things i do want to mention is that this we are working with assembly here so if you don't understand assembly that much first of all i don't have time to go over it in good great detail i recommend learning that on your own i would recommend just watching a bunch of youtube videos it's pretty simple and easy to learn once you get into it yeah like i said hopefully i explained everything else pretty good and um if you have any questions or anything, you just leave it in the comments. Or you can ask me on Discord. I am going to put my Discord down there. You just ask me and I'll be glad to help you out and get you along the way. Um, the next challenge we do will be the number two challenge. So let me go ahead and find that. So challenges. And this one has up to 20 challenges apparently. So we're going to be doing all of those. So let's go here. Next challenge will be the number two here. Like um, like I said, we're going through everyone on this website. So you guys want, you guys can subscribe. It really do helps out. Like the video as well. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video.